Hello, I'm Fred Piper from Royal Holloway, University of London, and associated with the MSC in Information Security. The question I want to ask today is, are you being impersonated, or maybe it should be, are you aware of how likely it is you're being impersonated? And this is just one of the many technology, social, managerial issues that we discuss on the MSC. So the first thing you have to ask is, why is identification important? Well, of course, it always has been. Banks need to identify you before they can legitimately transfer money out of your account. Countries want to authorise you or recognise you before they let you in. Now, these many physical representations, but they tend to rely on you being present, and often they're using photos and or signatures. So the question now is, as we move to the electronic environment, what happens? Well, automation forces us to find the electronic equivalents to such basic crime prevention features as face-to-face -face recognition and handwritten signatures. And despite the technology, there are many, many high-level losses, highly publicised of personal data. Probably, probably the most frightening is the UK tax office, which lost, and this may sound unbelievable, it's true, 25 million records of personal data. This included tax records and national insurance numbers. Now, of course, these, we don't know what's happened to them, so they may just have been genuinely lost. But if they ever fall into the hands of fraudsters, then these people's bank accounts must be at risk. So the question is now, what can we do? What, how do you do, go about protecting identity? And typically, we talk about three factors. You might identify yourself by something you know, like a password, or something you own, like a physical key or a plastic card, or some biometric, which is a physical feature. Now, think about passwords. We all use passwords. And they're convenient, but of course you can forget them, or more importantly, other people can guess them. So they don't offer you a particularly high level of protection against impersonation. Similarly, what about keys? Well, you have front door keys, but you know if you lose them, someone else finds them, they can gain access to your house. So physical tokens can be either lost or stolen. Now, whether it's a password or it's a token, the advantage is if you do lose it or steal it, then you can replace it. However, you don't want to lose it. An obvious thing is to do what we call two-factor, which is combine a password with a physical token, and that's the basis on which your ATM system works, where you go to a bank, hole in the wall, you put in your card, you have a PIN number, the PIN on its own would be very insecure, the card on its own would be very insecure, but put them together and it's quite strong, because if you lose one, then you're not necessarily in trouble. However, there are instances where people have lost money from ATMs and so on, and many people now are worrying about having much stronger authentication. And this is where biometrics come in. Biometrics are considered much more difficult to impersonate you. For instance, your fingerprint or your iris scan are probably unique identifiers of you. And if you have an, a database which relates you to your biometric, then this also prevents people claiming two identities. Remember, I could have two bank accounts quite legally, and the two banks may not know I'm the same person. I just, they just have different account numbers, different pins and so on. The biometric is unique, so when you're in a situation, for instance, where the American government are frightened, well, not frightened is the right word, when they're very concerned about who they let in, then the concept of using biometric identification is important. So we're reaching the stage where biometric passports are going to become the norm, and we're halfway there. So what are we looking for? Well, biometrics are an emerging technology, and they're certainly not perfect. However, they may be the best we have on offer at the moment. And the ultimate problem is to find a method that works, but does not inconvenience you, or, more importantly, invade your privacy too much.